Today in part four of my SUV in sub D in gravity sketch, I'm going to be designing the final details, including tail lamps and some of the interior details and also the door shut lines. So here you can see I'm using a sub D ribbon stroke to lay out the basic graphic of the tail lamp. And just like on the front end, I want these tail lamps to have a really strong corner graphic read. So these, these are going to really delineate the corners of the vehicle and give it that, that very sleek aerodynamic quality. This vehicle is all about aerodynamics, so this strong edge that runs across the, the upper edge of the deck lid running down the corners, it's a really important part of giving it that aerodynamic efficiency. So you can see I've given it a bit of thickness and I'm just adapting the tail lamp graphic to, to really fit the body. I duplicated the tail lamp and I just gave it a bit of layering so that you get a really nice strong read on the main illuminated portion. So now I'm going to create a secondary detail within the graphic, which is going to be a textured lighting graphic. You see I'm making these sort of arrow blade shapes. Just adding additional edge loops to give it more definition. And then using Smart Move, I'm going to make multiple duplicates. You can see I can easily make multiple copies with even spacing. And I'm just going to do some manual adjustment to make them fit nicely in the graphic. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make copies and I just want to illuminate the trailing edge of the light. So it's going to be an illuminated trailing edge on a dark gray base. So as I'm working, I'm consistently refining the surfaces and, and highlights just to give everything a nice, uh, a nice smooth consistency. Get rid of all the lumps and bumps in the surfaces. So I'm going to take the glass and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it glass. I'm going to take the glass surface and put it in its own layer so I can give it some transparency. You can see I have my, my pillar surface, which is really the, just the exterior portion of that pillar. So I want to create the interior pillar now. So I made a, a duplicate and I've increased the thickness substantially to give it more of the thickness of what an interior pillar would be. And then I've extruded a headliner element going across. So this is going to be a full skylight greenhouse, but there still needs to be a structure element going across the rear. And so now I've baked the thickness and I've added some edge loops. And I'm now going to just position it below the glass. So just below the glass, you're starting to see the inner structure of the cabin just below the glass. These are the kind of details that really give it a sense of realism. So when you see through that glass, you're seeing the pillar structure, you're seeing the thickness of the headliner, all of those things that give it that sense of depth and realism. And then from the interior, you see an actual pillar section, you know, that rounded shape that gives you some sort of head protection. You can see it's starting to have a much more 
realistic quality to it. Now I'm going to create an interior tub and I want it to mate perfectly to the exterior. So I've made a copy of the exterior and I'm just deleting everything but the very periphery of that interior so that when I made it back to the exterior, it fits perfectly. I'm just deleting all the unnecessary portions of the exterior. And then using auto select loops, I've, I've just extruded a, a side wall surface down and I've extruded a floor surface. I'm not really worried too much about the surface quality of the interior tub. It's, it's really there just to black out the interior area. I just want it to mate perfectly to the exterior. You can see I'm just, just welding some points together at the very ends here to give it, uh, just to, to close out those, those corners. So now I'm giving it a dark gray surface. Set it to smooth view and I'm going to bring it down back into vehicle and you can see it's going to mate perfectly with the exterior. So now my interior is, is nice and blacked out and from the interior point of view, I can see what my, my pillar section looks like. I can see what my outward vision looks like. And from the exterior, it just gives it that sort of blacked out interior environment. I'm giving it some thickness to control the offset with the exterior. Now I'm going to create a B pillar. So the B pillar is going to live just below the glass surface, and it's also going to create some, some structure and thickness. There's also a sail panel in the C pillar area, which is important for glass drop. So this is, this is where the actual door opening is going to be meeting up with the belt line. So now I'm going to turn on smooth view. I'm going to thicken it. The, those pillars have to have quite a bit of thickness in order to provide the necessary crash protection. But those are the elements that give it realism. Those aspects of a vehicle that you really don't think about all that much when you're just sketching and styling. But to, to give it that realism, you, you have to consider all of those details as much as you can. So I'm just adding additional edge loops so it has a nice crisp leading edge as it goes into the glass and then on the interior portion it's got a softer section. Again I'm adding thickness to the sail panel. And I'm going to add another one at the very front because this has such a fast A pillar the door parting line is not going to be able to meet up directly with the uh, base of the A pillar. So there's gonna be a small sort of flag surface there and that's where the door cut's gonna meet up. So now you can see I have an interior view. Now I'm not interested in creating a full interior at this, at this point in time, but I am going to create some quick interior elements so that when you're looking at the vehicle from the outside, again, it gives you that sense of realism. So I'm just creating a, a, a really quick steering wheel. And I'm just going to set that over to the driver's position and have it there. You scale it correctly to the driver's hands. And then using the volume brush, I'm going to quickly just sketch in a, a rough instrument panel. And again, I'm not interested in designing the interior. I just want to have it so that when you're looking at the vehicle from the outside, it looks like there's an actual instrument panel and a steering wheel and not just empty space. And I'm just going to create a, a small touchscreen. 
we just created a plane and now I'm going to just rotate it into position to be a touch screen using the precision move tool. And I might add an additional screen across the base of the windscreen. Okay, so now I'm going to do some door parting lines. And I, I've got a little trick that I use. I use the stroke tool in point mode. You can either use projection mode or point mode. I'm just sketching a quick door cut in projection mode that puts the stroke right on the surface. And I've used a flat black shader. And now I'm going in and editing the control points to get a nice smooth door cut. Generally what you want to do is you want to have at a 45 degree point of view, you want to have that front door cut be relatively straight if you're looking at it from a front three quarter 45 degree angle. So that gives you a nice smooth line. And I'm going to take that line and I'm going to put it on my transparent glass layer. So now that it's a transparent flat black, it's going to look like a line that has been drawn on the surface and not just, not just a tube. I'm doing the same with the center door shut line. You can see how I'm looking at it at this sort of 30 or to 45 degree angle and just trying to make that line appear almost straight in that front 3 quarter 45 degree view. Now I'm doing the rear door cut line, and here I'm just trying to make it look like it goes nicely across the rear quarter surface. Also doing the trunk parting line. These are the details which give a real sense of precision, realism, completion, and that's an important component to having a very completed looking model. So at this point in time, I have a model which is very, very close to being ready to go to high quality visualization in, could be in V-RED, could be in Keyshot, Unreal, or Blender. Or I can have some really, really high quality presentations in Colab with my team. And so here's the completed model. You can see it's got a nice polish to it, looks really refined, looks really completed, and it's ready for prime time in my realization software.